This is Chef Culture. I'm Courtney Kaysen, and this is a podcast dedicated to the exploration of the obsession and celebration of all things shopping. Today on Chef Culture, we're hanging out with David Evangelista. He's a fabulous hairstylist whose work's been seen on the Rosie O'Donnell Show, hanging out with Paula Deen, Survivor, and of course, Wickedly Perfect. Today, we pick his brain on some of his favorite things. Okay, so what's the last thing that you purchased? Do you really want to know? I really want to know. Okay. I am a huge QVC shopper. I mean, coming here was somewhat of a dream because (laughs) I'm a huge QVC shopper, okay? And I was watching In the Kitchen with David. Love. And I bought my genie plug that goes in in the sink. Wait, what? Wait, I don't know. What is this? Okay, I must have bought twenty of them last year and gave them out. Okay, so it's it's a, it's a it's a sink plug, like a stopper. Oh, and then you turn it, and then it stops all the water, and then yes. you open it, and it goes down. But it comes in all these different colors and everything. And this time around, yes, I got a really. I, I went shopping. Like I had, my brain went crazy. Yes. they offered a. They offered a scrub brush that goes with it that you can clean your um, your incinerator blades, your garbage disposal blades. And that made me so happy because last year I was like, oh my, everyone's like, where'd you get that stopper? I'm like, you want one? Hold on one second. One touch, buying everyone these genie stoppers. <laughs> I have so many thoughts about this. It surprises me with how good looking that you are. Mm-hmm. You have a thought in your brain that's like... I need to clean the garbage disposal blades. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm OCD. Okay. So I'm very clean. Yeah. And everything is in order. I grew up with an Italian mother who, like, Saturday mornings was not washing, car- watching cartoons. It was the vacuum cleaner banging on our door saying, <laughs> get your butt up. I have a twin brother, too. Get both your butts up, and you're going to start scrubbing the floors. I was like a little orphan Annie. Yeah, yeah. You, were, you, were, you were like, okay, you still continue to bang that the was, vacuum. That was Miss Hannigan. I love that. Wait, do so you have a twin? I do. Are you guys identical, fraternal? Fraternal. We look identical, though. Oh, my gosh. That's so mm-hmm. fun. So, okay, where do you live, and then where does your where does your brother live? Um, I live live in Manhattan. Yeah. And he lives somewhere in Virginia. I love that, like, spoken like a true person from Manhattan, somewhere in another state. Yeah, somewhere. It's like the only city is Manhattan. <laughs> Actually, no. I've, I hang out in another city called Ocean City, New Jersey. <gasps> really? Yeah. So, so you're I'm a sure. Be- I love the beach. I used a bad word. Beach. It's not the beach. I mean, it's I can, sure. Yes. Well, I, lo- I say the beach because being in New York for 26 years, we'd always yeah. go, I'd always go to the Hamptons. And yeah. it's like, oh, you're going to go to the beach this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to go to the beach. And when I say the beach, now people are like, no, it's the shore. And I'm like... Sure. I still say the beach, so, so yeah, can't help it. I can't, can't help, help it. it. It is the beach, right or wrong. I mean, you're not Touché. going to the beach. You're going yeah. to go to the beach. And like, <laughs> if you're going to walk along the shore, to me, that's like ocean water never touches your tippy toes. Well, what, what would you, what do you say, shore or the beach? I grew up going to the beach, but okay. I also grew up going in like the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, sister, so we'll beach. talk off air. Listen, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how long have you been a hairstylist? All your life. Um, since 92, 93. 92, 93. Mm-hmm. And so what made you get into I had styling? friends actually who were in the business yeah. and I grew up with them. They had, a, they had a very popular hair salon everyone went to in the area. And, um, and, uh, I decided to go to community college before I went to a university to figure out what I wanted to do. Cause you know, if I would have wasted my parents' money, they would have been really peed off at me and back then college is expensive well they put it through my head if we're going to help you you better know what you want yeah so i just kind of like you know and i don't know one day i was in class and i just like you know what and and you know i did well but i was like you know i I need to work on my hands i just i'm more creative i can't i don't think i could work in a corporate office or anything like that so i just got up one day out of class said see everyone i'm I'm going to beauty school they're like what i'm like (laughs) i'm going to beauty school people (laughs) and you know what's really funny about beauty school too and i mean i know this just because my mom's a hairstylist oh cool beauty school is expensive and it's hard and i don't think people realize just how expensive it is like and it's something that you have to complete within a year and it's either like you make it or you don't. Right. And, you know, you have to log in all these hours to yeah. get, as you know, with yeah. your, mom, your mother being a hairstylist. And, um, hey, it's either, you know, it's, you're, you make it or you don't. And yeah. I've seen people who did, who did not make it. <laughs> I felt bad. But <laughs> after beauty school, I went right to New York. I didn't stay in. I went to beauty school in Philadelphia. Oh, that's On awesome. Bainbridge, G. Madeline. 
Oh, I know Bainbridge. Yeah. Oh okay. You're second in Bainbridge. Live, yeah. I have friends okay. that live right off of so Bainbridge. So there's, there's the Aveda Institute right yes. off. Yes. That's where I went. Oh my gosh. I was, what a great place to start your career. Honey, I was the queen on Saturdays as, <laughs> as a, as a young cosmetologist who never worked in a salon before. My book was filled every Saturday with people. Oh, I love that. And I knew how to sell product. I knew how to like yeah. sell a haircut and color. But I would just do it all. Well, okay. So I'm going to need you to be our stylist therapist for a moment because okay. now we live in a world where you can you can get yourself a weave <laughs> as I lovingly clip, sit across from clip you. Clip it on, tape it on, yeah, or sew it on. Mine's taped on. Okay. Um, you can. We live in a world now like where women don't just go get a single process color. Mm. It's like. Four processes later, and you've got this beautiful ombre that's got this rose cold, you know, tint yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. How do you know how much to spend on your hair? Well, um, you know, I guess it depends on on a few different things. Um, in New York, women will spend money on beauty because they appreciate it. You know, what's the most you've ever had to charge a client? Well, I mean, I charge like four hundred for haircuts. Start. I love it. Yeah, and then color starts at four hundred. So that's awesome. So but, we're, yeah, but you know, but I will, worth it. I, I will say, you know, my stuff does last, and you don't have to come back every month. It lasts two, three months. Yeah, yeah. And you figure, you know, you run back and forth. But you know, it's it's just just you know, it's just what I've learned in my career and how I know my my mm is good. <laughs> <laughs> you can use a bad word. We do have a bleep in place. Oh, you do. If okay, because my. Sh- is good, baby. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. I'm going to drop it like it's hot. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and I love what I do so much. Yeah. I really do. I mean, I get excited every day yeah. to get up and create. So, yeah. you know, and I think people, women, men feel that when they're going to someone like me who just wants to create something amazing. Now, do you cut your own hair or should I? No, you know, you know, a, 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 sp- a certain person comes to my home. Wait, who? In the morning. What? His name is Gillette. <gasps> Amazing. Oh, yes. He comes with some foamy stuff. He slaps it on my head. goes, zoo, zoo, zoo. Okay, so wait a second. This is like a budget beauty moment. Like if you shave your head, you are like full on Gillette razor every yeah. day? No, not every day. I did it today because I'm on air tonight. Yeah, so I you like, have to be looking fresh. Well, I like to look clean shaven on air. I think yeah. I like to respect the audience and not come on looking like a like pig pen from the peanuts. Sure. I want to come on you looking. You never. Well, you know, I'm selling beauty. I don't want to sell. If I was going to sell razors and hair, I I would come on with and do a live, do a live shave, but yeah. I want to sell beauty and I want it to look clean and beautiful and soft yeah. and pretty. So you are um, all of the above. Oh, thank you. But yeah, so I don't do it every day. Okay. All right. So that's kind of cool that like, I love the fact that you not only give so many beauties their like hair color, mm-hmm. you give them their cuts, but you're your own like beauty guru for you. Yeah. Well, I've always loved it. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I used to um, sit there and just, I used to draw a lot of dresses and yeah. I used to study Vogue, uh, Bizarre, Allure. What I could do is, and this was, I have such a photograph of memory. I would study the editorial shoots Yeah. and I'd look who designed the dress, who did the hair, who did the makeup. Shut the book. Look at another book, and I'd start memorizing. Then I go back to the book an hour later, and I could tell you everything step by. I could tell you every single thing. So by the time I was, I don't know, fourteen, yeah, I could open Bazaar and say, "Oh, that's Giorgio Armani. Ooh, oh, you know, cool. uh, you know, that's Mary Greenwell's makeup, or that's Orbe's hair." I would know exactly who did what. Do you think that that gave you expensive taste early on? At 14, it's being expensive able- to be me. How much do we love Erica <laughs> yeah. Jane? I want to be her. I want to be Erica okay. Jane. Okay, I want to be her. I don't think I'd care if she hit me with her hair. I'd be like, oh my god, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. No, no. Um, I, you know, it made me realize uh, how you know um, things are made and why they cost certain certain things, certain, certain a certain amount. Because now I'm at a point where I can charge that because I know yeah. what I'm creating and what I'm giving someone is. Is a real deal. So what is the most expensive thing in your closet right now? Hmm, most expensive thing in my closet would probably be a Gucci double quilted zip up motorcycle jacket. Oh. And they don't make double quilted anymore. That that was when Tom Ford was in. Yes. And, yes. and it, there's no lining. It's all double quilted leather. Like the, <gasps> it's yeah. That I don't want to tell you how much that was. But you can. We okay. won't. We won't tell anybody. Really? Like yeah. seven thousand. Okay. So, like, explain to me what that process was like because I imagine I had to go to Times Square and hang out for a while and um, 
I used to work other ways uh, at night, late at night. Um, that jacket came in real handy. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you Look, have to circle around this jacket like a shark would its prey? Because sometimes, of we, course, I, you make how, you how make long? friends. With, you make friends with people at Bergdorf's. Oh. You make friends with people at Barney's, and you are like their family. Okay, yes. and yes. I told this person, hold this. Because it was more than 7000 Okay, sale. so you waited for it to go on sale. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that much of a sale, but I said, once it drops, because I know someone's going to grab it, I'm like, yeah. and they knew me, I'm like, yeah. hold I'll it come for, back. I'm hold it for, for daddy, it. please. When you, okay, so here's the thing. Say you have $100,000 in your bank account right now. Okay. I still think there's part of me that if that were me right now, I'd still feel nervous handing over my credit card for $7,000 because it would yeah. have at the time been the biggest purchase. Like, is your hand shaking well, when you go to give that? Well, like, that's do you good believe you feel, it's happening? That's good you feel like that because you respect money. Yes. You know, and you have worked hard and yes. you just don't. Right. Well, with me, you know, I would force myself to buy things like that. Yeah. And make me work harder. Yeah. Like, and then I bought an apartment and I made me work even harder. Then I bought my shabby chic couches. And I'm yes. just, you know, you have to have a, a drive behind yeah. what you buy. That was always my philosophy. Like, if I was going to buy a $10,000 Cartier watch, I'm like, well, yeah. you better be shuffling those haircuts real quick or finding a way to work harder and make, a, make it happen. Yeah. And if not, you can't buy it. Well, and I think that's really interesting that you say that having like especially in what you do for a living having something to show for it like your clientele is that every single day whether mm -hmm. they're on tv whether no, they're they a are. private client you yeah. know living their best in manhattan what was it like to buy your first home in manhattan because that's something that i in the world of hgtv yeah how do you know what to look for when everything is just smaller by nature um, I don't know. I, um, hmm. I was lucky because I bought a few places and they were big. Yeah. So, you know, I, I invested my money properly and got a return back on it. Um, we, lo we love an ROI. Well, I know. Whenever I bought a place, I always thought I'm going to sell it, you know, in, in yeah. the future. So I was I always bought that way. Yeah. So I wouldn't buy too small. I'd buy bigger. Yeah. So in a way, it would make me work harder. And yes. Then in the future, then when I sold it, I'd make a profit. And that's what happened a few times I did it. Yeah. Um, but what do I look? What do I look for? Or yeah, because I just think like I look for energy first of all. Really, the building has to have good energy. Okay, so do you know that as soon as you walk in? Yeah, or oh, do, yeah. Is it like a first date where you can like no. feel it out fifteen minutes? No, in? I know when I walk in a place if I like it or not. Okay. Yeah, I I like I don't like to fix things up a lot. I like more like turnkey. Yeah, and yeah. I like to decorate. Yes. So to have you know to fix things up, you know, I mean, I've, I've done new floors in my apartments. I've done that, but never really knocking down walls and stuff. Cause I've always wanted turnkey. So it's yeah. easy for me to go in, just bang, bang, bang. Well, it seems like it could be a pretty miserable existence to have to live through a renovation in New York city. Yeah. And I've had a lot of friends and clients who've done it and they've <laughs> yeah. lived in a hotel, thought they were going to have a renovation for two months yeah. and they're on a year. And yeah. it's like, you know, no, thank you. Yeah. So what's the current vibe of your place right now? Um, well, it's a little smaller. Um, it's, uh, I guess eclectic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have gold Buddhas. I have glass Buddhas, Ooh. big red head Buddhas. I love Buddha. I love Buddhas. I collect Buddhas. Um, modern with a sense of, um, contemporary okay. feel to it. Very you know, cool. my art's very contemporary. Now, when you say you're obsessed with Buddha, like if you go to Bali, are you getting Buddha on a magnet to put on like the refrigerator? Like if you see No, I'm buying a stone Buddha and shipping it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love Buddhas. I do. I, I just love the energy that comes from a Buddha. Oh, wait. Where's your favorite one from? Well, I bought, I bought, my friend has a store in Manhattan, yeah. so I buy them from her. <laughs> no way. So yeah. does she like curate them from like all over the world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her name is Phoebe Cates. She was an actress. Oh, I know Phoebe Cates. Okay. Drop Dead Fred. Are you kidding me? She's Favorite one of my best movie. friends. Yeah. You need to tell Phoebe Cates right now that okay. me and my best friend only refer to each other as snot face. Oh, really? We are grown women and we're always like, you look wonderful, snot face. Oh, okay. Well, she's one of my closest, one of my best friends in the world. And she has a store on Madison Avenue called Blue Tree. Yes. And I saw her on Good Morning America with that. Yep. Yeah. And she, um, she, cur her store is curated so beautifully. It's like amazing jewelry from Paris. Great. Yeah. Cashmere is from Scotland, yeah. clothes from Japan, and you know the Buddha is from everywhere. I mean, she's amazing. She goes to um, <clears throat> really cool flea markets in Paris, and yeah. yeah so uh, I, I get a lot of my stuff from her. So, what's the last thing you bought from Phoebe? 
I went. I did a lot of my Christmas shopping. She's got great gifts. Yes. So um, with my last thing I bought from her, okay. So the last thing I bought from her was my friend just turned fifty, and um, she has an artist that does these lucite hand dyed, hand carved boxes. Mm -hmm. So she will take lucite, and she gets a dentist drill. And this woman will sit there all day long and carve like safari landscapes or under the water fish or beautiful iris flowers or, um, I mean, beautiful from little, little boxes you put a ring in to huge on the floor standing boxes to screens to lamps. This woman is amazing. Her name is Joyce Francis. Look her up. She's going to be in the Met, I think. They're going to do a whole thing on her. Oh, that's incredible. I have three of her boxes. And they were all gifts from Phoebe, of course. And oh, um, but I got my best, my other great friend who turned fifty. We've been friends since fifth grade. Yeah. I bought her a box, a hand carved box, special, <gasps> you know, hand dyed light because she loves pink. So we hand dyed yeah. it light pink, and it's amazing. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wait, so what won't you spend money on? What are you like? Nope. Give me the least expensive of that. God, ooh, that's a really good question because I never really thought about what. The, um, I can't even say gas because there's only one gas. Well, I'll give you an example. And I was thinking about this the other day okay. that I had I had lunch. My lunch came down. Like my lunch was like eleven dollars, and I was like, mm, "That feels expensive." And I don't know why. I think that I like lived in a world at once because I'm from Georgia and Mississippi, where like Panera was once five ninety nine right. for lunch, and right. so I was like, mm. "But then if I had like an eleven dollar glass of wine, I'd be like." Over. Right, right. Well, you know, I was just in, I was just in the airport in Chicago. I just flew to Whistler for a week with my with my friend. We went there for uh, just for a week to have fun. Awesome. And um, and there was a and we were, we got off the plane real quick because we had a we had to connect. And um, thank God it was the same gate. Oh, it was yeah. it was the same plane. I was like, hi, I did the same flight attendants. Is that yeah. me again? <laughs> um, so there, we went and got this sandwich because we were so hungry. I'm like, let's get sandwiches. And the woman's like, I'm just warning you. I'm like, what? The sandwich is $17 each. <gasps> and I'm like, what? Oh, no. And I was so hungry. Yeah. I could have ate, like, the woman's leg. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Been there. whatever, just give it to me. Like, yeah. here's my credit card. Yeah. You know, whatever. So we get the sandwich. We get on the airplane. And I'm like, holy sh**. <laughs> this sandwich is so <laughs> effing good. It's worth $25. What? Okay, what was on the sandwich? It was an avocado spread with fresh roasted sliced turkey off the turkey. Ooh. So now that's it, any vegans don't out there, don't, the don't be writing letters to Courtney and saying whatever. Okay, we're not in the mood. <laughs> I eat meat. Okay, people, get over it. Um, I love meat. I know, right or wrong. I can be like very carnivorous. Yeah, and then it was on this like. Uh, home this in in store baked seven grain bread yeah. with tomato oh. and and maple dipped bacon. Okay, this does not sound like an airport sandwich. It was amazing, and my friend and I were like, "Okay, this is worth twenty five." This is like we've gone to Park and Rittenhouse, right? Well, like you know, I go into Chipotle the other day. I'm like thirteen dollars really for a, ch- a bowl of you know of rice. I didn't even get rice. I got chicken and like freaking sour cream and like <laughs> lettuce. <laughs> You're like, I was living my best Atkins life. I know. Life. I was so like, expensive. I was living like the WW life, okay? Um, That's amazing. <laughs> Wait, so do you like to cook? Yes, I'm an amazing cook. Okay, so. Oh, I'm amazing. Well, I mean, I'll send you on Iron Chef, so I know you have an affinity for it. I do. Do you go by recipes, or are you somebody that like walks into a beautiful grocery I can do store? Or. Okay. Yep. Um. 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 Versatile like that, because uh, because I'm creative, I can whip something up really quick like that. What's your favorite grocery store in Manhattan? Um. Well, I live right next door to Trader Joe's, so it's hard not to run over there and just you know pick up my uh, pick up my chocolate, my bread, my, my half you, and half. Have you tried their rosé vinaigrette? It just came out like no. three weeks ago. No. It's so good. Is it? I can't think of one thing that I've purchased from Trader Joe's that's that's been bad. I will tell you that the produce is okay. It's kind of iffy. But I did. I have been buying their f- little filet, ro- their little filet cuts. Yes. I like, like the filet mignon. Yeah. Like little yeah. two of them in a. Yes. And perfect the, for and two. And I freeze them and I just take one out at a time and I defrost it and it's amazing. And you know what I put it with sometimes? What? Shh. Something from QVC. What? 
St. Clair's mac, mac and cheese. I, I will cut a small child for that mac and cheese. <laughs> I completely agree. I think St. Clair's is absolutely... I went to school in Mississippi and I knew about St. Clair's like side dishes. Their sweet potato souffle oh, is like had, crap. I had the other night with my filet mignon. Oh, and, I, and I cut yum. the filet mignon and I mixed it in. But I had to take myself off auto delivery because anytime soon, I may be on my 600 pound life. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You'd be happy. You'd be mm. happy. You'd be jolly. I'd be jolly. I'd, I'd be rolling around everywhere. I'd, I'd roll here. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't need a car anymore. You know what? Some might say that's a faster form of transportation. <laughs> no, but oh my God, that Sinclair's mac and cheese. Ooh. I know. There's Ooh. not one bad. And you know, sometimes I often think, and I don't know if it's because I'm Southern, but like just making dinner of only side dishes. Yeah. I would do that in a four pack of St. Clair's. Yeah. You know, I, I live with Paula Dean for a whole summer and she had a magazine. Yeah. And we, we had done her hair. I did her hair and makeup that time and we did her. We did a year's worth of covers in like two months. Yeah. So I live with her. I didn't want to go back and forth. It's like, you know, she's like, just stay here. So she used to whip up a lot of stuff too. And we used to eat. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, that sounds like a dream boat. Yeah. Secondly, when it comes to, it's funny, like when it comes to dinner, like are you oftentimes cooking for just you or is there someone else? Um, no, the someone else ended in August. Do we hate, do we hate them? Well, I don't hate. Yeah. I just like very deeply, and if they're out there listening, go to hell. Um, listen, I'll like Fine. <laughs> so, no, hate him. Fine. So, no. I'll hate him. Okay. I'll hate him so I that mean, you don't look, have. I'll, you can be the bigger person. Yeah. I hate you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, but now I cook for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I do cook. I like cooking for myself. I, you know, I, I like it. I do. When it comes to said breakups, Mm-hmm. I feel I mean, there's a really fun song out right okay. now with Ariana Grande yeah. or Grande, yeah. however Twitter is told Thank us to. You, yeah. Next. yeah, but also Seven Rings, where oh, she goes yeah. out and buys buys for all of her girlies. I didn't hear that one though, but I, I read. Oh, it's but so it's good. But it's on her last album, Sweetener. No, it's not. I love I don't, Sweetener. It, best album. Oh. Best I'm a huge album. fan of her. She's so underrated. They need. To, she's amazing. I think her voice is absolutely amazing. What did you do, experience wise, retail shopping wise? You know what? You to, know what? To I will tell you that. Well, that song "Breathe" helped me a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. nice. yeah. Because I used to drive back and forth uh, from Ocean City to, to Manhattan. Yeah. So I used to listen to that CD a lot. That song is coming. Used to give me a lot of inspiration. Yeah. Um, 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 and what, what I do retail wise, you know what? I don't know. I'm traveling. I just yeah. booked a two week trip to Italy. <gasps> no way. Where are you going? To the Amalfi coast and to Tuscany. <gasps> so I just booked. Good for you. Yeah. Good I, for you. I was in Whistler last week. I went to Charleston for Thanksgiving. Amazing. Jerry, uh, it's in Charleston. Amazing. Oh, that's like one of the, <clears throat> what is, they have like 600 restaurants oh, just in the city alone. And I what, two it. James Beard Award winners yep. there, which is awesome. Yeah, I've been to one of them. It's um, the Chop House, right? Or it's, uh, what's it called? Not the Chop House. It's, is it Husk? The guy that owns Husk? I've been to Husk. Yeah. 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 That's a good way. Husk. And what's the other one? The Steakhouse. It's not rouge, is it? No. No? Okay. Um, I'll think of it. Okay. Right. But, you know, I like having those moments when things like that happen in our life, like where we decide to do something special for us because we are better now than we've ever been. Yeah. And I don't ever feel like you can put a price tag on that. No, you can't. But you know what? It's the evolution of us. Yes. Of you, of me. Yes. It's the evolution of our yes. journey. And yes. And I think when you wake up and you realize the evolution is not going the way you want your evolution to go, you need to change the course of it and yeah. start carving another road and that's the hardest thing yeah you know i don't know if you ever had a breakup like that but oh yeah you know you have to come up with a new routine and you have to start you know getting your tractor out and start making your road again and that's what i'm doing yeah one of the worst breakups i ever had i cut off all of my hair like chin length and i made my mom put like 19 colors in my hair and like when i came out of that my girlfriends are like I'm not sure physically you were the same person. Yeah. But it's like I had to good? shed every oh, part of, of that. Uh, of course. And I've done it for clients who've gone through divorces yes. or even breakups also. I mean, I have no hair to cut, so I yeah. do other things. <laughs> well, but it's amazing too. Like you talk about like spending uh, spending habits mm-hmm. and, and spending interests. Like when life throws you an event like that and everything has to change. And it's like in a blink of an eye, you shed everything, you change everything about your apartment, your clothes. And it's like, while you're going through the process, it's not great. But then like when you, when you finally come out of it, you're like, wow, I got a, I got a clean slate and I did something with it. Yeah. yeah. I have no regrets about it. Yeah. I have, I have, I mean, I have no regrets at all, but you know, like I said, like when you're in the thick of it yeah, and you're just moving yourself through it, it's a different feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, 
But the best feeling is when you can release that person out of you. Yes. You know, and I did it one one weekend, drive me over the bridge to the beach. Yeah. I opened all the windows and I released all this energy over the water. It was amazing. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, it's good. It was a good thing. So See, you know. I feel like we just had a mini therapy session and we didn't even have to pay an hourly fee. Like I mean, this was free for us, but it's free for the I mean, it could be listen. a C and D hour where people if they want to call in, people <laughs> hey, call in. C and D. Courtney and David are gonna take your questions now. <laughs> hey amazing. Courtney, hey David. Um I'm in a rut. Um <laughs> We're here to help you, baby. What's wrong? Come on, let it out. <laughs> hold on to your bra straps. Come on, hold on to your bra straps. Scream. Let it out. <laughs> okay. I. So you've worked with a lot of great women. I have. I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. the years. Who has been your favorite to go shopping with? I'd say Phoebe, of course, because yeah. she's just, yep. she's one of my friends who has amazing style and she's, she's has, she's taught me a lot about style. And how would you describe your style? Mine, um... Well, um, definitely not trendy anymore. It's more thought out, not in a bad way, but like, you know, if I put like tonight for, I'll be on air. Yeah. So I'll wear a beautiful, just simple black suit. Yes. And I have a white t-shirt with a beige cashmere J crew sweater and these really cool, big, like dad Gucci, um, oh. dad sneakers. Dad you know? snakes. Did you, did you ever see I, dad? Oh yeah. I love yeah. dad snake. Yeah. I is, have, is that the same? Like just for our listeners, would you... The female equivalent, would that be like a mom jean? Yeah, yeah. Love. Yeah, you know. Um, bell, like bordering bell. on an orthotic. Right, which I love because my feet are so bad. I have like well, bird your... feet people. They're like. Eh. Well, you stand <laughs> on your feet all day. I yes. totally get it. Yes. Uh, let's talk about your Gucci fanny pack that you're rocking oh, right yeah. now. Casually. I love, I love this Casually. Thing. Love it. Love it. So it's a man bag yeah. for you. Like what, what kind of treasures and trinkets do you keep in there? Car keys, apartment keys. Wad of money. Always got to have a wad of cash. Sure. Uh, credit cards. Do you think that's a New Yorker in you? Because like you could just be inspired with whatever, you know, store, yeah. street vendor. Well, no. What's scary was I was a big shopaholic at one point. Like I had all my credit cards memorized and my friend would fly <laughs> in and she was a shopaholic too. And we would fly to get, she, we would be, we'd be at the stores at 10 a.m. in the morning waiting for the doors to open. The doors are open and we just go to town. We'd be like two little pigs in a, in a, in a pen. How and, thrilling though. Like oh, the we got thrill of that. Oh. Well, then it became a little competitive because she'd be on floor three and I'd be on floor two. I'm like, yeah, I can't talk right now. I have a pair of Prada boots in my hand. Oh, well, okay. Well, uh, I got an Hermes scarf too. I, I got a go. Okay, bye. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like, was there ever the game of like one-upping each other? It's like, well, I have those Prada boots. That's not going to compare um, to your well, we, Hermes we, bracelet. No, we, no, we, we, not that we were in competition, but we, we were out of control. I mean... I yeah. kind of love it though. Yeah. I love hearing about that. Did you ever see that. that show absolutely fabulous with yes. the two women from um, England who they're drinking, they're pill popping. <laughs> Not that we're pill popping. We like to have our wine when we're shopping Sure, and we like to run around. That's yes. what we do. Love that. Yeah. So you walk in like a nice store before you buy something and you're like, I would like to have a glass of champagne to get in the mood. Well, once they see us coming in, they see us. We're right. We're they right. know. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they just know. sniff us out. Yeah. Especially when you're in Paris, they like, they, they try to get you drunk. <laughs> What's the best thing you've ever bought off a street vendor? Like, and it doesn't have to be in New York, but wow. all the places you've gone uh, shopping. Hmm. Good question. Probably a piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I still, uh, am friends with the artist this day. I bought it probably 25 years ago. Wait, what? Yep. His name is Nosco. Where did, okay. Where was this? In Soho. <gasps> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, is it in your apartment? Mm -hmm. Is your what is it? What is it exactly? It's stick figures, black and white. Yeah, not like Keith Haring, but that pop art type of stuff. So, yeah, with a little Spanish flair to it. Ole. Yeah, ole. So he had a little color in it, a yeah. little more color and um, a little more vibrancy. Okay. So love that. All right. Well, last question: What are you saving up for? Really? You have to go there? I have to. Well, there's a few things. Okay. Great. Okay. We are unlimited really? in time. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Are we live? Y'all. Oh, we are. <laughs> oh, well, um, okay. So I love that Cartier nail bracelet. Did you yes, see it? Yes. Justin Clou. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to Italy for my 50th birthday. Yes. And I turned 50 this year, not until November. So I start, I'm starting a year of trip starting in January. Okay. So I'll be going to Napa this year. I'm going to Italy for two weeks. I'm going to Santa Fe for a week. Um, <clears throat> and just a bunch of places. 
do you think that having a milestone birthday affords you the opportunity to get something larger Hell than life? Hell yes, woman. Good Hello. For you. I bought this in Paris on Rufa Borg for my 40th, the, the, the I not love upset bracelet. About that. No, I walked right in there. I like that. It's like rose gold. It yeah, goes really I well love with rose. your complexion. Yeah, I love rose. And um, yeah, I walked right in there since my, fifth, my 40th birthday. Fit me up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to tell you how much. Don't want to tell you what we had, what we had shopped for. Yes. The past week because we, we were in Paris for like ten days for my birthday, my fortieth. That's awesome. Now we're going to Italy for my fiftieth. So look out, Italian people. So wait, are you going? Are you going to get your Cartier piece in Italy? I think so. Yeah, in okay, Florence. Good. good for you. Good for you. All right, David Evangelista. That's Always it. good to I see you. I do like cheap you. things too, like bubble gum. Ooh, what flavor? <laughs> um, I like um, dentine ice. So a whiter smile and fresher breath. Yes. Not like a tar-stained teeth and mouth like a baby's dirty diaper. No, I, I'm, more, I'm more like, you know, <laughs> fresh, clean. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank yes, you so thank much you. for hanging out with us. Oh, the anytime. Culture. Thank you. Ciao, everyone. Happy hairdos. If you like this podcast, check out my other podcast with my beauty bestie, Elise Ivy, Basic Beauty, where we break down the world of beauty week by week. We talk trends, our favorite celebrity crushes, and of course, you get a sneak peek at what's going on in our lives.